Oh, hello. Many Magic the Gathering players ask the question, why is Lord of the Rings Tales of Middle-earth going to be modern legal? Well, in this professor's opinion, the answer is to sell packs. But I don't think it has to be modern legal in order to sell packs. It already has some great card designs. Check. It has a super popular IP that is being brought to life through incredible artwork and flavor. Check, check. And it even has a one of one serialized card. That's right, a card that there will only be one copy of. And there's already a $100,000 bounty on it. Oh, 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 excuse me, I'm getting an important call. Sorry. Hello? Yes? Oh my goodness, it's up to a quarter of a million dollars for the one of one ring. And what's that? You don't say. It's now half a million dollars for the one of one ring. It can't possibly get any higher. I. It got higher? A million dollars. Someone's actually offering a million dollars for the one of one ring. It's not even a soul ring. But it's worth a million dollars to someone. Wow. Are we sure this isn't just Sauron making the offer for the One Ring? Because those are some super villain level numbers. One million dollars. Someone has to have done that joke already. I'm always late with these videos. Because I write scripts, it's probably even higher by the time this video goes live, but here we go. But regardless of if someone is offering $1 million or just to annoy the person offering $1 million, offering $1 million and $1, if Wizards of the Coast felt that they had to make Tales of Middle Earth modern legal in order to help it sell, <laughs> wow, was that unnecessary. It's gonna sell, honey. And I'd like to discuss not only why modern legality is not needed for a successful set such as this, but also how it may have unintended consequences that actually hurt Magic the Gathering as a whole, or at the very least, the modern format itself. Blah 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 blah. But first, the ad. I may not be able to give you one million dollars for the one of one ring, but I can give you fifteen dollars to spend on Magic the Gathering cards, and also, whoa, some free commander decks, and maybe, ooh, it's double masters, collector boosters for modern, just in time for Lord of the Rings to make some of these cards no longer relevant, and also, oof, I, what's this? Oh, hey, it's Commander Deck from Cute to Brute Secret Layer, still sealed, I got an extra one. So I'm gonna give it away on my next stream on Whatnot. And you know, there's never been a better time to figure out what the heck Whatnot is, because when you use my code to sign up, you get $15 to spend on Magic the Gathering cards and packs and maybe a bobblehead. I'm gonna assume they have video games. Probably sneakers. I really just look at the magic stuff. Whatnot is actually quite simple, so you should really stop asking what it is already. It's just a platform that lets people sell things, like eBay, but while live streaming, like Twitch. I like to think of it as if Twitch and eBay had a baby, and then that baby live streamed a lot of Magic the Gathering sales. And while you may not, probably not, crack the one ring, you can at least have $15 from me to you to spend on whatever you want on Whatnot. Just use my code at www.whatnot.com forward slash invite forward slash Tolarian College and you'll get a $15 credit to use on anyone's stream, maybe even mine. It's up to you. It's yours. Spend it. I'll be live streaming my own Magic the Gathering stuff for sale this Tuesday as well as those great giveaways at 10 a.m. Pacific. So you can come use that $15 there or just go on to countless Magic the Gathering streams and spend it wherever you want. So what are the unintended consequences of Tales of Middle Earth being made? Oh, look at that, we're out of the ad. All right, we're out of the ad, everyone. Tales of Middle Earth being made modern legal? 
Well, first, let's start with the state of modern ever since Modern Horizons. Ah, modern, the format that once was where you could play with old cards without having to worry about legacy reserve list issues, but now is just where you play with Modern Horizons cards. Vendillion Click and Dark Confidant and Tarmogoyf's relegated to mere afterthoughts. Tales of Middle-earth will be modern legal despite not entering Standard or Pioneer, and this, essentially, makes it a pseudo-Modern Horizons 3. It's not really Modern Horizons 3, but it's kind of a soft Modern Horizons 3. And again, I can think of no justification for these cards to be modern legal, except of course that by making them modern legal, it may increase the need players feel to open them due to needing whatever cards from this set may or may not end up played in top decks. It's a gimmick, but it's a bad one. Modern is already a format that has become dominated by cards that are available in limited supply at prohibitively high prices. While this was once largely a role occupied by fetch lands, since the introduction of Modern Horizons, the cost to entry and upkeep in Modern has skyrocketed with the majority of impactful cards now coming from those sets. And while Lord of the Rings Tales of Middle-Earth does not appear to be anywhere near the power levels of a Horizon set, if even a handful of these cards become new staples for the format, it can have dire consequences. Tales of Middle-Earth will not only have a limited supply of these new staples, but as they are Lord of the Rings IP, it is highly unlikely Wizards of the Coast will be able to reprint them without having to create a Universes Within version. And while I am sure Wizards of the Coast would love for there to be high-end Universes Beyond cards that are in desperate need of a Universes Within treatment, thus allowing them to create one day a Universes Within set filled with overpriced reprints justifying overpriced booster packs, such a set is years upon years off at best. The potential damage to modern in terms of cost and accessibility, to me anyway, is not worth the gimmick of printing directly into the format, especially since this set would sell just fine, if not the same, whether it was modern legal or not. Having Gandalf and Frodo and Sauron now forever pieces of a non-rotating format like modern also just further dilutes the overall Magic the Gathering immersion and once again pushes Pioneer as the last great refuge for those who enjoyed the original modern format before both Horizons and Universes Beyond. Honestly, to me, that's one of the biggest pushing points of Pioneer. No Horizon sets, no Universes Beyond, oh yeah, and no fetch lands. Hey, speaking of Pioneer, I challenged two top players of the format to compete in the Pioneer Gauntlet, choosing from 10 different Pioneer decks and having to use a new deck each and every round. If you've not yet seen that video, you should give it a watch. It's not Magic the Gathering as Garfield intended, but eh, these days it's kind of as close as we can get to modern as Gavin Verhey intended. I in Pioneer. I think. Now, I've also seen some arguments that this set should have been fully made standard legal, essentially taking the place of the core set of this year, which would have put all of these cards into the full card pool, including, but not limited to, standard and pioneer. But I wonder if the print numbers are large enough that this would be healthy or perhaps a hindrance for the overall game. And speaking of print numbers, let's talk about the effect the one of one true ring is going to have on supply. When you've got a million dollar bounty, and that may yet get higher, there may be yet sweeter deals that are to be offered set on this one of one ring, you are going to have people buying up cards, but to the point that there may not be any packs left on the shelf. You know, it's interesting to me that we have gone from a time when Wizards of the Coast would insist that it can't make pre-constructed products that are too good or reprint cards of too high a value in said products out of a concern for those products disappearing off the shelves as they are bought up by scalpers. And now, well, they've really leaned into the whole let people buy all this product off the shelf mentality, haven't they? Because that's exactly what's going to happen. The frenzy that these serialized cards, not just the one of one ring, but all of them are going to create, has already created, is going to likely cause it to be bought up before most players can get a hold of it, or at the very least before most players can get a hold of it at a reasonable price. And I would not be at all surprised if collector boosters see huge markups 
Coast on the secondary market. Interestingly, Wizards of the Coast may be trying to combat this with their special edition collector boosters that they will be selling later in the year. These special edition boosters will not have the special serialized cards, the one of one ring or otherwise. So those in the know won't scoop them up off shelves, but will the average player know that these special collector boosters won't have the special cards in them? won't have the one of one ring in them, more unintended consequences. We're now getting into the idea that people are essentially going to be misled into buying collector boosters that they think may have something that is not in them. And given how confusing a lot of the distribution of Magic the Gathering cards and where to find them is in booster packs today, you can hardly blame the average or casual player. Heck, even in franchise players have a trouble keeping it all straight sometimes. And while these rising prices may not be a big problem for commander players who more and more just proxy cards if they're too expensive, the competitive formats do not have that luxury. And so, yeah, once again, modern gets hit. At the end of the day, I can't help but think of the great success of the Warhammer Commander decks. While I may have argued with Vince about why they were such a success on our recent episode of Dies to Removal, there is no denying that they were a huge success and they didn't need much in the way of gimmicks. People bought the Warhammer decks because they loved the IP and people bought the Warhammer decks because, well, they were well-designed commander decks and that's really the truth about Tales of Middle-earth. It doesn't need gimmicks to sell Lord of the Rings. Lord of the Rings is the gimmick. People are going to buy it if it's a well-designed, flavorful set, which it really looks like it is. But those are just the unintended consequences that I am concerned about, and now I want to hear from you. What do you think about Tales of Middle-earth being modern legal? Do you think this was necessary? Are you a modern player and you're excited for these cards coming to modern? Maybe one of them is going to tear the format asunder a la Raghavan, or maybe you're concerned that it will. Let me know in the comments below. And remember, I'm giving all of this stuff away on my Whatnot stream this Tuesday at 10 a.m. Pacific. All you have to do is be there, listen to me go on and on. It's called Talarian Contempt. Boy, have I got some things to rant about. And throughout the stream, I'll be just giving these away to a viewer. And if you want, you can use my sign-up code to get $15 to spend on any Magic the Gathering or other products that you want on Whatnot. Just go to www.whatnot.com forward slash invite forward slash Talarian College and you get $15 credit from me to you. Thank you, Whatnot, for sponsoring this video. Next time on Shuffle Up and Play. Today, we have a powerful pod of potent personalities coming to bring you Commander, but with a twist. This format is Treasure Cruise. It was developed by members of my Discord to satisfy the base Magic player urge to gamble whenever possible. It features a special add-on deck of mostly helpful artifacts with a couple harmful curses that you can roll a die to go digging and get something for free on your board. Ba-boom! God damn it! <laughs> Is this back-to-back -back curses? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's time. It's time for bees. No, not oh. the bees. Iron Crag Pyromancer. I see a lot of things that die to three damage, so I'm pretty excited about that. So everything in your hand and in play dies to removal? Specifically removal that is set up by the Howling One that's currently in play. Oh, stop it. Outside of game, how, how, if I'm gonna just top? I think you need to say to the camera, I'd like some top, please. I and would like some top, please. <laughs> it's almost. <laughs>